Welcome back to another Layers video and in this episode we're going to be talking about the drama project and some of the demonstrator parts that were made throughout it. Specifically we're going to talk about the engineer break part and this was built and designed alongside our partners Renishoff in the project and we used some experts from our design for additive manufacturing team who are going to discuss why we did the demonstrator parts how they were designed and then we're going to go chat to Sean, one of our LPBF experts, about how the parts were actually made. And you can access all of this information through the Knowledge Hub, which we'll link below the video. So without further ado, we're going to chat to Andy T, and he's from our Design for Additive Manufacturing team. Oh, great. So, um, yep, thank you for the introduction, Rory. Um, uh, as we mentioned, I'm part of the uh, Design for AM team at the MTC, and we've been heavily involved in the, in the drama project. And um, what I'd like to talk to you about for a couple of minutes is the, the case studies. So um, drama, as you know, is a, a, a big uh, um, project aiming to improve or increase rather the, the uptake of, of additive manufacturing in the aerospace supply chain generally. And one thing we thought we would do to help that would be to create some um, case studies. Um, the case studies being demonstrators of the way you can apply um, additive manufacturing and create um, products which uh, are either new and embody new functionality or even allow you to increase your, your market uh, penetration or you can use uh, app AM applications to improve the way you make uh, products you already make, make them in a more efficient manner with uh, shorter lead times, lower costs. And uh, what I'd like to talk to you about briefly is the uh, engine air brake, which is one of the, the demonstrators we made. So um, the engineer break, um, the way this, the idea for this, um, this demonstrator originated is we saw uh, an online publication about a company called ATA Engineering who came up with this design for an, an, an engine air brake. And we thought we could uh, see if we could make it using additive manufacturing and what, what the benefits might be. Um, an engine air brake, uh, for those of you who don't know, is something that uh, is utilized to um, um, reduce thrust from a gas turbine engine. In this uh, particular uh, application, the engine air brake is, uh, sits on the back of the, the gas turbine where the, uh, the exhaust uh, is, and it uh, rotates vanes into the, the gas flow to disrupt the, the flow. And the, the, the kind of benefit of these, these designs of engine air brake is that, that you can um, slow down or reduce the thrust from a gas turbine without actually changing the, the RPM. So they're, they're good for reducing uh, noise pollution um, so you can throttle back your your thrust without changing RPM. Uh, as I said, the vanes rotate into the into the the gas flow and disrupt it. So um, this design um, is something that's an assembly, and we thought to ourselves, well, let's see if we can do that in 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 additive uh, as an assembly in one. Um, and the question is, well, why would you want to do that? Um, what, what's the benefit? And the, the interesting thing about this case study for me is that it, it embodies this idea or encapsulates the idea of being able to build uh, an assembly in, in one go using additive manufacturing. So if you think uh, in terms of conventional manufacturing, if you look at your kind of a booth or a Dewhurst rules and you're looking at a product or an assembly you want to make, if you see that there are a couple of components that are moving relative to each other when you're doing your design, you go, okay, okay, those, those have to be manufactured separately and then assembled. That's the kind of basic rule of design for uh, manufacturing and assembly. But uh, with additive manufacturing, that's not always the case because it's a, a layered process and you're making uh, your geometry uh, in, a, in, a, in a layered fashion. You can actually um, print things which, uh, when finished, are already assembled. And that's exactly what this demonstrator is. So this, um, the, the engineer that you're looking at, it was made um, in metal powder bed using a titanium uh, TI-64 alloy. And it basically came off the build plate, as you see it, it was basically wire wire dm off and it, it came off uh, readily assembled. Um, it's actually sized to fit a Williams uh, EJ22 uh, engine. So it happens that this build plate should, uh, um, this, this is actually one-to-one -one scale for that application, but obviously with bigger build plates, you can make a, a bigger part. And the idea is you could um, wire dm this part off your base plate uh, attach it to a mechanism to rotate the veins and and, and you're good to go. The, the question is then, wh why would you want to do that? Um, and um, really the answer is that uh, additive manufacturing is a process which allows you 
to create assemblies uh, in one go. Um, it's unique to the process because you're building it in a layered fashion. Um, so in the case of this engine air brake, um, it was uh, built um, in a metal powder bed machine uh, and it basically came off uh, as you see it now. It was wire redeemed off the base plate with all the, the assembled parts um, um, built, built in place. And the benefit there is really around the kind of manufacturing process, the logistics of having separate parts which you assemble, revision control, control of the, the way that the um, manufacturing process is done. So there are um, a, a number of secondary benefits to um, making things in one go, uh, a simplified bill of materials. Um, so this particular um, engine air brake we made in uh, titanium. For the application itself, it'd probably be a nickel-based alloy for the, for the temperatures, but the principle is the same, you, you can do that. And um, it's uh, something that if you were to put in service, you would have to think about um, the clearances between the moving parts um, and also fatigue life. So how would you be able to improve the surface texture of the areas that would be hard to access? So these would all be things that you need to have a look at. But um, we think this is a great uh, demonstrator for showing the art of the possible when it comes to unique um, advantages and possibilities of uh, the, the AM process. Thank you very much. So we've got Miguel from the Design for Additive Manufacturing team here at the Manufacturing Technology Centre and he was part of the team which designed the engine air brake. So Miguel, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you designed it? Well, the one of the first things that uh, we, we look at when designing the engine air brake was how we can create a hinge that can provide us 180 degrees to, of movement or how we can consolidate between 30 or 40 components components into a single part. Mm. Oh, fair enough. And what sort of tools did you use to design uh, the, the component? Well, for this component specifically, we use uh, some parametric design mm. and as well some of the tools that we use when designing for IT manufacturing, where we can check if our design is going to distort or is going to uh, produce properly mm. as well. Fair play. What would you say were some of the challenges that you faced when designing this? Well, as you can imagine, that complex component with movement one of the first challenges that we faced was how we can remove the powder, not just from inside of the part, but as well in, in, inside of the hinges, really. Mm. So we created those openings mm. where you can remove the powder from inside of the hinges, but as well, uh, we created some structures that you can remove the powder from mm. inside. Another challenge that we faced was uh, how we can create uh, that hinge mm. that opens all, all the way and making it uh, self-supporting. Mm. So as you can imagine, as we have so many components, we cannot have supports inside of those hinges. So we needed to design it in a way that we, we, need, we don't need it, uh, any support in any, in any oh, part. Fair play. And what would you say are some of the benefits of uh, a design like this? Well, I think the, one of the first benefits is that you get many parts produced in a, into, a single, into a single build. That means that you can possibly disrupt your supply chain. So instead of having more than one supplier, you can have just one supplier, really. And with that as well, what we needed is to do uh, the part consolidation that we did. So that will provide that, that, kind, of, that kind of benefit. Hmm. And another benefit that, that this, this type of component uh, provides is what uh, additive manufacturing provide, provided us when designing. So like making it uh, lightweight. So hmm. in some of the areas, we created some ISO grid yeah. so that the part is very, is very lightweight. And one of the other benefits that we try to, to provide with this uh, component that additive manufacturing provides us is uh, making parts that are customized. Mm. So we created a, a parametric model that uh, uh, everyone can download directly on the, on the MTC Knowledge Hub. Mm. So where you can modify some of the parameters, mm. the design modifies itself mm. and adapts to, the, for example, the number of veins or the diameter, we can easily uh, be modified. Oh, fantastic. So some of those files are actually on the Knowledge Hub right now? Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, no, thank you for that. Uh, so next we're going to go uh, and speak with Sean, who's our metal powder bed fusion expert, and he's over in the additive manufacturing uh, facility. My name's Sean Smith. I'm principal engineer at the MTC in our additive manufacturing team. I'm here today talk about the engine air brake, test case, and the drama program for digital reconfigurable additive manufacturing for aerospace. The engine air brake is a process component for laser powder diffusion 
on the Renishaw AM500Q, see behind me, titanium 64. Following concept design, we went through iterations of build to develop the method of manufacture and the given process steps to allow the intended function of free moving blades in assembly this engineering engine air brake this is a first iteration of design to prove the movement of those blades through manual intervention but then later iterations developed for assembly to the gearing system and motors for controlled movement of those blades. Following build in TIE 64 on the Rene M500Q, we went through heat treatment, stress relieving, to help control, prevent distortion on removal from the base plate inherent in the high stress type 6 4 material processed or laser powder bed fusion and then the removal of the assembly of processed material components by Warrity Air freed up the individual blades for movement to find out more details of the engine air brake and the demonstration showpiece. Go direct to the Knowledge Hub on the MTC NCAM website. And for more details on the Renishaw AM500Q, of course, go direct to Renishaw. But you can find out the evaluation work we are carrying out here through our additive manufacturing team at the MTC.